So in this video, we're going to use what we learned about Fraunhofer diffraction to analyze the single slit experiment. Uh, so single slit Fraunhofer diffraction. And you can think about this just as an example. Uh, you probably already know what happens when you have single slit diffraction. Uh, but we're going to go through it in uh, using the Fraunhofer formalism just so you get some practice using it. So we know that uh, we're sending in a plane wave into this slit, so the single slit, and this has some length, uh, let's call this A. And we're interested in seeing the pattern on some screen, uh, some distance D away. And so uh, in previous videos, we said that we could figure that out. So the electric field or the, the field pattern as a function of x, and so let's call this the x direction, and this coordinate here on the screen, let's call this xs. So we're interested in the field pattern on the screen, and we said that this was just proportional to e to the jk uh, d times e to the jk xs squared over d, and then the Fourier transform of the aperture function, which is a function of x. And so this will ultimately be a function of xs. And the x will drop out and everyone will be happy. Oh, and there should also be a 1 over d here. So let's divide this by d. Now, just to make our lives easy, I'm going to define x equals 0 at the middle of the slit. And so the top of the slit is going to be at a over 2 and the bottom of the slit at minus a over 2. So the most important thing is defining our aperture function g of x. So in this case, we can draw it out graphically. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, so this is x equals 0. This is a over 2. And this is minus a over 2. And so our aperture, we're assuming, isn't attenuating the light. So it's got a height of 1. And it's got a height of 0 everywhere outside the slit. So all we need to do is take the Fourier transform of this function. Uh, and if you haven't done that before, I suggest you review um, some videos on... Uh, on taking the Fourier transform because it's fairly involved uh, as a as a concept just to understand what the Fourier transform is. But I'll just write out the integral here for completeness. So f of g of x uh, is just equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of g of x times e to the minus j k x times x dx. And so in this case, g x is just equal to one. Uh, from minus a over 2 to a over 2, so we can replace the bounds of integration. So this becomes minus a over 2, and this becomes a over 2. And this 1, we can, we can just ignore this because this is 1. And so we're just integrating e to the minus j kx times x dx. And so every, we know how to integrate an exponential. We just get the 1 over whatever the argument of the exponential is, uh, multiplied by what it was before. So this is just 1 over j times kx, e to the minus j kx times x. And we're evaluating x goes from minus a over 2 to x goes to a over 2. Oh, and there should be a minus here. And so after doing a bunch of algebra, uh, you'll eventually come to the conclusion that the Fourier transform of this function is just uh, a sinc function so sinc of kx times a over 2. And sinc uh, here is, if you haven't seen it before, uh, you can look it up, but it's just defined as sine x over x, where x is the argument. So we can plug this back into our initial equation for the Fourier transform of g of x, and we can figure out the electric field pattern at the slit. So now it's just uh, let's let's draw these or let's write out these phase terms. So e to the j k d e to the j k x s squared over d divided by d, and then the Fourier transform, which is just sinc of k x. Now we defined k x previously. Uh, we we actually defined this to be our original wave number k uh, multiplied by x s the the coordinate on the screen divided by d. And so we can put that in where k is uh, the wave number of our uh, electromagnetic wave, so 2 pi over lambda. And so we can plug that in here. So sinc of k times xs, and then we've got an a, uh, a over 2 times d. 
And I really should write this as proportional to, because we're definitely missing some proportionality constants out front. Uh, and typically, we're interested in the magnitude squared of the intensity. And in that case, these phase terms will drop out. And I'm going ignore to the, ignore the D for now, because we're already missing a, a normalization constant. But in that case, the pattern looks like sink squared of k x s a over 2 d and it's got some constant out front which we're not sure about let's call that u naught but this is the really important part the pattern uh, so qualitatively what does the pattern look like at the slit and this is exactly what we would have got from our single slit uh, diffraction if we were to just carry have carried out the integral without knowing anything about Fourier transforms this is exactly the same thing that we would have got but the beauty of using Fourier optics and Fraunhofer diffraction is that we now have access to all of the power of the Fourier transform which is pretty amazing like this guy lets us do absolutely incredible things and we've got our super general aperture function g of x so we don't uh, we, we, we are not just restricted to single slits or even double slits or triple slits. We're, we can have any function that we want and we can even add phase in here. And so I'm gonna go over this uh, aperture function in more detail in the next video. So you can understand really uh, the, the raw power of this aperture function. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, also please feel free to post those down below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye.